wasn't sure what to do or where to take you on my Saturday stroll this week. So I thought I would just take you along as I do my morning chores. And the first thing we have to do is get Miss Virginia out of her night cage and put her in her day cage. And I can't do this with one hand, so when I have her in her other cage, I'll bring you back. Miss Jenny, you ready to get in your cage? Huh? Let's come on. Let's get in your cage. Hi, Lucy. And my old girl, Lucy. Look at how gray her muzzle is. Okay, we're going to put you in here. Oh, you see my shadow. <laughs> she loves it in here. She really does. And if you can see inside her pen here, if you can see it, but she has a couple of eggs. So I'm going to have to get something to reach in there and get those eggs. Alright, well now I'm going to go over and take care of these guys. Let the ducks out and give all the chickens their scratch and see if the ducks need any food or fresh water. You can see there where Sally's been digging like crazy. That's a whole other story, Miss Sally. Well, looks like these guys need some food. And I'm going to get them some scratch. They're enjoying their scratch, and now i got to go give those guys some scratch. And I go through the duck pen. And the ducks are completely out of food. And they definitely need fresh water. Okay. Come on, Ducky. Can we go out? There they go. <laughs> Silly things. Ducks are so fun to watch. They're so messy, but they're so fun to watch. All right, girls, it's time for your scratch. There they are, enjoying their scratch. One of my buffs is broody, so I'm going to have to send Travis out to throw her off the nest in a little while and collect eggs. That's the worst thing about these breed of chickens, both of them, especially the buffs, which are the orange-colored ones. They go broody so much. It's very annoying. I mean, unless you want to have a rooster and you want to hatch eggs, it's a, they're a real pain. I won't get, it, get these breeds again for that reason. I'm going to go over and give... Miss Jenny some scratch and then I'll take care of the rabbits and then I'll go back and feed the ducks and change their water. There you go girl. It's over there. Go find it. There you go. So let's go take care of the rabbits. And I'll tell you the story of Sally. Oh, about five years ago, she got a disc injury in her neck, which is very common for dachshunds to have spine in injuries. And thankfully, she got over it um, with medicine and rest. Oh, you got food. Yeah, you got food. You could use a little water, though. And she's not had any... Um, more issues since then. Well, last week she started acting funny and we really didn't know what was wrong with her. She wasn't acting exactly the same as she did when uh, she hurt her neck the first time. So we kind of tried to um, take care of it here at home and just give it time. 
Well, a week went by and she wasn't any better. She hadn't really got any worse, but she wasn't any better. So yesterday I took her to the vet and she just kind of, um, the vet is pretty sure that she just uh, re-injured her neck from all the digging that she's been doing. It just aggravated that, that disc injury. So she is on three different types of medicine and she has to be on bed rest for at least two weeks and yeah and it, 190 dollars later <laughs> oh, that's the reason why I'm gonna get some food for the ducks. that's the reason why i uh, tried to take care of it at home first because i knew i knew the bill was going to be ridiculous They've got three pans, and I don't know. all three of them are empty. So let me get these guys fed, and I'll be back when I'm filling their water pans. And underneath here is another duck egg back in that corner. Scott got me this grabber thing for Christmas, and I thought he was silly. <laughs> I thought, what are you getting me that for? I thought it was a prank joke, but actually it's really handy for reaching down and getting eggs that are laid in a strange place. So I'm going to use this tool to get Virginia's eggs too out of the, her little coop. Alright, got these pans rinsed out and now I'm refilling them. Rinsing them out is a two-handed job so <laughs> that's why I brought you back now. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to fill their pools today. The pools are not too bad. Um, I fill them. I change the water in their pools about twice a week. I change the water in their water pans either daily or every other day, depending on how gross they are. And yesterday I was so busy taking Sally to the vet. Yeah. Um, she had an appointment at 11.15 in the morning, and we got there early, and they got us in right away. But it took a while. Oh, you know, it just takes takes time in the office. And they had to draw blood, and because they did a Lyme's test, see if it wasn't Lyme's disease, which thankfully it wasn't. And um, we got out of there about, oh, it was afternoon. And one of her medications... I had to go fill it at the actual people pharmacy and I always get our medicine at the Walmart pharmacy and Walmart is right across the street from the vet so that's handy and I was telling them that I'd been trying to give Sally pills um, at home and for some whatever reason she was being very stubborn about it I wanted to give her a Benadryl before a half a Benadryl before we left because she has a tendency to get car sick and the vet had said all years ago that a Benadryl would help with that. So I tried to give her half a Benadryl that morning before we went to the vet and she absolutely refused to take the pill. Which was very strange because I'd never had trouble giving her medicine in the past. So the vet had suggested I get some of that Braunschweiger, which is like a liver sausage and it's really soft and malleable and hide the pill in that. So while I was at Walmart, I uh, picked up some of that Braunschweiger and I'll tell you folks, that really worked. If you have a dog that is reluctant to take a pill, you hide it really well in a piece of Braunschweiger. You give them one piece of Braunschweiger without the pill and then you hand them the other piece of Braunschweiger and they'll eat it right up. <laughs> But anyway, so I picked up a couple of things at Walmart, and I, I had gone to the pharmacy, and they said, oh, it'll be 25 minutes. And I thought, I'm not going to make Olivia and Sally sit out in the car for 25 minutes while we're waiting on this medicine. So I thought, well, I'll take them home, get um, Sally the medicine that I had gotten from the vet. Because she's, on, like I said, she's on three different kinds. We got two from the vet and one here to get at the pharmacy. 
and then I'll eat some lunch and then we'll go back and pick up the medicine. So it was like 2.30 in the afternoon before we headed back over to Walmart and they still did not have that medicine ready. We've had to sit and wait another five minutes or so, close to maybe 10 before they had it ready. So thank goodness I thought to not sit there and wait 25 minutes because it wound up taking them about two hours. I don't know what took them so long. But we got Sally her medicine and uh, she took it perfectly fine with that Braunschweiger. And she's been resting then in a, in a cage since then. And I think she's gonna she's gonna come out of it and she's gonna be fine, but Here's Miss Sally. Aww. She's in confinement in Olivia's room. She has to stay as still as possible for a couple weeks. We let her out to go potty. And if we decide to let her out and to roam around the house a little bit, we have to shut the doggy door so she can't go running out into the yard. But sweetheart, poor little baby, baby girl, she seems pretty content in here, actually. The medicine kind of keeps her tired, which is a good thing. But you'll get better soon, won't you, girl? You'll get better soon, won't ya? Oh, oh, how I wish she would have just gotten over it on her own. <laughs> Another two hundred dollars for the vet. Oh my goodness, animals are expensive. Yes, they are. All right, I'm gonna. I'm finished with the water, so I'm gonna get this hose put up. And look at that duck. Her head stuck through the fence. Silly duck. Um, I'm gonna get this hose put up, and um, I'll take you over to the garden. So after I get done with my chores, I try to go over and see what's ready in the garden. And August is a very busy time for the garden, that is for sure. It's been ke keeping me very busy. But on the way, I wanted to show you, this is our little brooder house. And on Thursday, I'm going to be ordering our meat chicks, and they'll come sometime next week. And. So, Scott's been working in here. He set it up for me. Um, you start them off in a really small space that's round so that they can't huddle up in a corner and um, kill themselves, <laughs> basically, suffocate themselves. Um, we're going to get a heat light put in here, and then that's all the extra um, waterers and feeders. You start off with the really small waterers and then you work your way up to the bigger waterers and then once they get to be about two weeks old I'll start letting them go out into the field into their yard out out uh, through that door there that's um, green that green uh, framed area that's a door that can go out into the yard so yeah we're getting ready I'm kind of excited, yet I'm kind of have trepidation too, because it's a lot of work. I'm not scared of the work. I'm afraid of failure. <laughs> um, last year we only had one loss. They sent us, I ordered 50 chicks, they sent us 52, and we butchered 51. Um, and I'm hoping we have as good a outcome this year as we did last year. Uh, so let me take you to the garden and I'll show you what we're going to get. Alright, it's time to pick some cucumbers. I am done making pickles. I'm not making any more, but um, I'm still keeping the plants picked because I've been giving them to my neighbor. So if she wants to do pickles, she can. Plus, we do like to eat, um, just eat raw cucumbers. They're very yummy. So This is the size I really like. I don't like them when they get much bigger than that. 
So let's see. We've got quite a few cantaloupe coming on. The watermelons are doing really good. They haven't, uh, they're not ready to pick yet, I don't think. Look at this nice big one here. Let me check it. Yeah, I don't think it's ready yet. I'll be glad when it gets ripe. And look at this one. Oh, they're so pretty. There's another big one over there. Lots of melons. And, oh, look at this winter squash. Let's come see what they're doing. Try not to step on these vines. Oh, yeah. There's at least two. Lots of blossoms. We really need to go out and pick black-eyed peas. I think I'm going to send the kids out to do that today. But look at that jungle. <laughs> at that jungle you can't even tell the uh, rows but yeah some of them are starting to get are over ripe um, they're starting to get dry you can see so those have gone too long but I'm gonna send the kids out to pick these today and I'll try to get some black-eyed peas in the freezer and let's come see the squash plants Trying to, trying to not step on vines. It's like a maze. Oh, I'm really hot. It is hot today. And it's supposed to be very humid. Oh, yucko. Alright, here's the zucchini plant. I don't see any fruit on it right now. The squash plant. Well, it's dying down, but it looks like a, at least a section of it is still living. So, we might get a few more squash off of it. In fact, there's one there that needs to be picked, it looks like. And, oh, look at all the weeds. The weeds have gotten taken over. Peppers are doing very well. Um, I don't need any more peppers for anything that I'm planning to can. So, I'm going to just let them get bigger and dice them up and put them in the freezer. They freeze really nicely. So let's come look at the corn. The corn is done. We've completely picked all of it and I put 14 pints in the freezer the other day. We picked an entire wheelbarrow. Well not completely full but pretty full. And then it took us the whole afternoon to process it. And then let me pick these cucumbers and then I'll show you the tomato plants. Well, I only brought one bowl because I didn't think that I'd have this many cucumbers. <laughs> Holy crud. Look at all of these things. Now these big giant ones, these big fat ones, I cut those up and give them to my chickens and they love them. I'm going to have to take some more down to the neighbor, it looks like, in a day or two. So I'm going to have to take this back to the house and get another bowl so that I can pick tomatoes. To show you what my brother has been working on, this is my, my dad and my brother's house. And my mom had planted this flower garden. Oh, she's been, she worked on it for years and years and years. And the last three years of her life, she was sick and couldn't do anything. and we were too busy taking care of her and then last year we were all in a state of grief too much so to do anything with this garden but this year my brother has been working his little hiney off and he put all this edging along the front and he's working on getting it weeded and he's going to plant some more perennials in here some sun loving perennials um, he still needs to get that all weeded in there and then he made the little walkway there to go to the hose, to get to the hose, and then he's mulching it. So I think it's going to be so beautiful when he gets it all done. Uh, that's a climbing rose that never really has done very well, but we're hoping now he, he put it on this trellis thing. Maybe it'll start uh, doing better. 
and I can't tell you what these flowers are. I really don't know. I'm not good at it. I think those back there are some sort of a lily, like an Easter lily. And I think that's some of, that's a poppy that it's done for the year, so that's why it looks dead. But anyway, I think he did a fantastic job, and it's going to look so nice when he gets it all completely mulched and weeded. And my mom would be very happy to see it. And maybe she can see it from heaven. Okay, I'm back with an empty bowl. I'm going to pick some more tomatoes. Um... The only thing I still want to can is some spaghetti sauce that I can also use for like pizza sauce or whatever. But my recipe in the ball canning book calls for 45 pounds of tomatoes. And then you add other things, onions and spices and that sort of thing in it. And you cook it down. It's a long process. You have to cook it down until it's like half and you have to get all the skins and stuff out. Anyway, I'll do a video on it when it comes time. But I thought... I am never going to have 45 pounds of tomatoes that are ripe at the same time. How am I supposed to do this? Well, it dawned on me the other day that, well, I can wash the tomatoes and core them and um, quarter them and put them in the freezer and weigh them and write on the bag how much they weigh. And then when I get 45 pounds in the freezer, I can just uh, thaw them out and make my sauce. So I was like, duh, I don't know why that didn't occur to me sooner. So anyway, I've got 10 pounds in the freezer. I've got 10 pounds of tomatoes that I picked day before yesterday sitting on my counter that I need to get processed today and put in the freezer. And then I'm going to pick tomatoes today and see how much more I can get. And probably in another week or so, I will have 45 pounds and I can start my tomato sauce process. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these tomatoes. And I've been using the slicing tomatoes and the Roma tomatoes, just all of them in the sauce. So, or in the freezer for the sauce. So when I get these all picked, I will show you what my bowl looks like. And uh, we'll wrap this Saturday stroll up. Okay, well this is how many tomatoes I got today. I don't think it's another 10 pounds, but it's at least five. So I'll get another 15 pounds in the freezer. So about halfway there to my goal. Um, I did pick some of this um, collards for my birds. I'll pick these up. The, the worms are getting to it really bad, so I don't know. It's getting to that point in the season with the garden that I'm getting a little tired of messing with it. So once I get these enough tomatoes for my sauce, I think I'm just going to let the animals get the rest of the produce because I'm getting tired. <laughs> And I see one of my Roma plants looks like it might be getting that blight, which I was really hoping I could avoid this year. If it starts looking really bad, I don't know. I might just pull the whole plant so it doesn't spread to the rest of my tomatoes. Or, like I said, I might just let it go. <sighs> and there's a kitty that's been keeping me company. One of the spring kittens. Oh, I don't know what his name is. I don't know if he has a name. I told him Cole would be a good name for him because he's black. I'll have to ask my sister if she if he has a name. Her her granddaughter named a lot of the kittens, so Oh, all right. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed this Saturday stroll. And next Saturday will be the last Saturday stroll for August. And I'll probably have kittens, or not kittens, <laughs> kittens on the brain, um, chicks. I'll probably have chicks to show you next Saturday stroll. All right, friends, we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.